Jesus will. Welcome back everyone, welcome to another video analysing Jimin's playing. Thank you very much to this user for the suggestion for this video. As always, if you learn something, all I ask is that you please leave a like or a comment or something like that. Without further ado, here is the arrangement of Misty by Jimin that we are going to be analysing. The composer I'm going to focus most on today is actually the arrangement for Bud Powell. Now, I really enjoyed this arrangement when this video first came out, and so I've already transcribed most of it. So I'm actually going to break it down as I play it very slowly for you. So we start quite simple, and then we have this cliche chromatic line in the left hand. Okay, this is going from the major seventh of the chord down to the fifth, so you could use this um, all over the piano if you want. So let's do it in C. It's very much tonic uh, vocabulary. The next part that we do um, is we go... So we're doing like a mini 2-5-1 to get into B flat minor there. We then have this lovely bit here. So once again, we're using a chromatic line in the left hand. This time, we're going up to the root of that two chord. To the third of the dominant chord, which would be E flat seven here. Now, instead of playing E flat seven, um, we play, which is quite a basic tritone substitution. So instead of E flat, we are playing an A seven while we have the G in the melody. Now, this would be the third of the dominant chord. So whenever you see the third in the dominant chord being played in the melody, what can you do? tritone substitute and then you're there in A flat major. Hopefully we're all making sense so far. Next thing we're going to do when we get to A flat major we do not just stay still and play A flat major loads. Um, we play this nice little line here. So this will likely remind you of Barry Harris. That is because this is very much a diminished sixth sounding line and this is one of the major exercises that Barry Harris suggests you actually do to become more fluent in diminished sixth play. Um, so for example, this pattern here, I've done it in A flat. Let's do it in C just to make it a little bit easier to see. Sorry that was a bit rough, it's been a while since I've played that exercise. The next part we use an A flat major 7 arpeggio ascending. And instead of using A flat minor 7 here, we use A flat minor major. So instead of I hit a lot more atmospheric, and I really like this chord. This chord substitution of a minor major chord for a minor 7 chord is quite common, especially on tonic minor chords, but you can use it in a 2-5-1 in this instance. It works especially well when the ninth is in the melody, because you've got that minor third that sounds quite pleasing to the ear instead of what you might have otherwise. You've got a, a minor ninth in there, so it sounds a bit uglier. On this 2-5, we are going from the seventh, major seventh of that left hand, chromatically down to the third of the next chord, which is a D flat seven flat nine. You could even use sharp 11 there if you want. I'm not sure which one Jim used, I can't quite remember. Um, and I'm outlining D flat with D flat and F in the left hand there. So instead of that, I'm playing. So. Then I can play. 
So instead of an E flat major chord there, I am playing a dominant sharp 11 sharp. <laughs> I don't know. I'm playing a dominant sharp 11 flat 13 chord there because I've got the third in the melodies if I was playing E flat. So a nice substitution you could do, take it from this. So after that G7 sharp 11 flat 13 chord, we have this little run. It's just going up the whole tone scale. I can talk more about whole tone scales in the future. If you wish to comment down below, that is something you'd like a video on. And then we have this line. So we've got an outline of a major third in the bottom, minor third in the top, hopefully you know that is a sharp nine chord. Um, and then this line. So notes of A minor, but it's a C6. And then ending on F sharp. This was just quite a common Bud Powell thing, apparently. Then to an F diminished. So we've just gone around in fifths up until now. It's quite a nice line, that. Now we're expecting some kind of B flat chord. How can we get there? Oh, look at what we do. Oh, isn't that a nice movement? So what we're doing there, we're going from the regular fifth, instead of the flat five of F, and playing the root of F, and I go up chromatically in the right hand to the third of B flat, and I jump down a tritone in the left hand, so from the root, a tritone down to a half step above my target note, which is B flat, and then land on B flat, so I've got, and we fill in the middle notes. Hopefully that makes sense. And then we have this chord which is an A7 sharp 11. On this A7 sharp 11 chord, we are gonna use something we spoke about earlier, which is a whole tone scale, except this time it's gonna descend from A. All the way down to the bottom. This is played very quickly, but because of the note groupings, i.e. we've just got white notes, black notes, white notes. It's actually quite easy to get the speed up, it just takes a little bit of time. And you can use your left hand on that last note A if that helps. Last little bit then. Ooh, that's nice, isn't it? So this is outlining F locrium, which is not something we've talked much about on this channel at all. But it sounds nice because I'm this this right hand is playing like a B major sharp eleven thing in thirds um, because that belongs to G flat, and obviously. It, F locrian in the left hand um, belongs to G flat major as well. And then we have this last little bit. So it's like resolving a B flat augmented chord. Then last little bit, which belongs to the um, half whole diminished scale. These two minor thirds. You could continue it onwards if you want. I haven't left myself much time to cover anything else this video, so I'm going to just touch on um, some special moments from the arrangement Jimin has done of Errol Garner playing this. There's this great line in there that I really wanted to touch on. It sounds like this. I'm going to play it very, very slowly. So what we do in there, this is that change, you know where we were going from A flat major. In that previous one we went before going. Doing something slightly different here. Um, we're using a chromatic line. Now, why does this sound good? Kind of outlining, uh, enclosing around an F, which is the sixth of A flat major, and then enclosing around A flat with that chromatic line. So. Sounds quite cool. And then, in closing around the A flat, we then have just a straight chromatic line while we're still in A flat major. Now, once we get to B flat, this is where this B flat is holding us down as a pedal. We would call this an inverted pedal because it's in the top, but honestly, who cares? All that matters really is that that B flat is holding us together. So we've got um, B flat. Also. 
And then when we get to D flat in the left hand. And then we're into uh, minor. The Art Takes Some Arrangement also has some amazing moments in it. I wish I could talk about it more. Um, that first pentatonic run, the infamous Art Takes Some Pentatonic run, I thought I'd go slowly. So the first grouping, here's how it sounds. Now, if you struggle to read that, it's okay. I'll break it down for you. The first grouping is a grouping of seven. We go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we're gonna repeat a similar thing, but in groups of six. And you can repeat this down the piano if you wish. And it's played very quickly. So you're gonna to have to work on your fingering here. So I'm playing three, four, two, one. Two, three, one, two, four, one. Two, three, one, two, four, one, two, three, one. You pick whatever's best for you. This is the only thing that works for me. And eventually you'll get the speed up for it. Yeah, it just takes a little bit of time, that one. Really hope you enjoyed that video, guys. And if you did, please leave a like or a comment or share it, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Turn on notifications, get notified whenever the next video gets uploaded. If you have any suggestions for videos you'd like me to analyze or any pieces you'd like me to analyze, then please leave them in the comments also. Any questions about this arrangement or any of the other arrangements in that video, please feel free to ask and I'll definitely get back to you. I get back to every comment left. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.